So I'm back at my tired landlord property and I want to share some thoughts with you. I've gotten some questions on tired landlord properties and why they would don't just do it themselves. So I'm going to get into that in that, in this video, I'm going to drop a couple links to the previous videos that I've done on tired, on this tired landlord house that I bought and some thoughts that that's brought about and some questions. So I'm going to share that with you today. If you would like subscribe, leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up, hit the notifications. I appreciate you checking out the channel. So I'm in this house that I bought from a tired landlord, found them in the newspaper where tired landlords tend to hang out sometimes. So that's one of the things I shared in the previous video is where to find tired landlords and talked about the newspaper strategy that sounds outdated, but it's effective for me in my experience it works it's good for at least one deal a year it seems like and so i purchased this house and had to pretty much take everything down to the studs as you can see behind me we've got new electrical we've got new plumbing new ac lots of carpentry work went on in here and we didn't change any of the layout it's just the wood that was in here had to be replaced so that's what we've got going on here and the question is, well, so I bought this house for, you know, in the 60s, like 62, five, 63,000. I'll probably put 60 into it and I'll probably sell it for somewhere around 200,000 more or less is my projections. And some of the questions were, why doesn't a tired landlord just do that themselves? Well, the simple straightforward answer is they're tired of dealing with that property. And so they've already had a year or two years or a decade or six months or whatever it is that has just wore them out a lot of times on that particular property or real estate investing as a whole. In this case, he was done with the property. He owed the bank somewhere around $60,000 and he was happy to get out for that. And even me, you know, I've done plenty of flips, plenty of properties, and I looked at the property and I wasn't expecting this level of a flip. So some, and he's never flipped properties. You know, he did uh, a lot of owner financing on land deals, subdividing properties, and then selling the lots and financing them. Uh, this was a rental property for him. He had rental properties um, in the past in the Austin area. He was a, uh, a landlord and he was just, this was his last house. He was tired and he was ready to get rid of it. He was done with it. He even said to me in the negotiations, I'd be happy to give you the house if I could, you know, obviously he couldn't, but that's where he was in the nego He didn't care about the house anymore. He had no, no attachment. You know, there was no emotional attachment to this property or any other properties for that matter. You know, he just wanted to be done with it. His previous tenants had torn it up and he was right. They had torn it up. The house was in bad shape and it was going to take this level of remodel. And he wasn't interested in doing that. And some of the questions were, well, you know, are they just so well off or are they just, you know, they just have so much money that, you know, they can just be done with it. And it's, well, sometimes, you know, a lot of these landlords, tired landlords are in different situations, but the common theme is, yeah, I'm just kind of done with it. You know, it doesn't excite me anymore. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't do anything for me. And yeah, if I spent six months remodeling it in $60,000, you know, I'm just not interested in doing that. And a lot of times they may not have access to the capital or they may not know how to go about getting the capital. And even if they could get the capital, they may not have access to subcontractors and know how to navigate that process of, you know, how do I find an electrician? How do I find a carpentry crew? How do I take bids from multiple electricians? How do I take bids from multiple carpentry crews? And are we gonna change this out? Are we gonna keep that the same? Are we gonna do the doors? Are we gonna do the windows? Uh, where do the outlets need to go? What kind of lights do I need to buy? What kind of fixtures? What's the market like in this neighborhood? What's the end buyer going to want to do with this house? Could this be a short-term rental? What does the zoning here allow? And they've got so many other things on their mind with that property that it's been a, a sour rental. They've just dumped money into it. They've had tenants not paying them. That's what they're thinking about. And then to think about doing a full remodel on top of it, tired landlords are literally just tired. And so if they can see an exit and get out of the property, that is a weight off their shoulders. And somebody with fresh energy, you know, they spent their energy on this house or any, you know, I'm just speaking in general terms here, but when they're tired of a property, they've already spent so much energy throughout the years or whatever the time is, 
that they're literally just done. And so somebody coming in looking at that property now is saying, oh, look what I could do with this and I could do that. And this would be a great Airbnb or this would be a great fix and flip or this would be a great long-term rental or this would perfectly fit my burr strategy. That's fresh energy coming to the table, you know, and that's what you really need to get in there and work with a tired landlord type of property because you're not tired, you're fresh, they're tired. And so that allows the opportunity for tired landlords to exist and people to buy properties from tired landlords. You're looking at it through different lenses, through a different set of eyes, and that's where these tired landlords and motivated sellers can mesh so well with somebody with fresh energy and a different outlook on the property. And sometimes that's what it takes because this person that you're buying a house from may have seen that as nothing but a Section 8 rental that they've had in their portfolio for 10, 15 years. And maybe the neighborhood has changed, but in their mind, it's still the neighborhood that you know they initially bought in or you know, areas change, uh, zoning changes, you know, what may have been just a, you know, a downtown area at one time was great for rental properties, maybe like a great coffee shop and, you know, all that kind of stuff can go in there now. And in their mind, they just don't see it like that, you know? And so it's just a, a fresh perspective, a different set of ideals, a different use for the property. So that's what makes the tire landlord strategy fresh and a lot of times you can't see it or I can't see it or in general people can't see it like well why don't they just do that themselves right why don't they just do that it's easy you know if you're going to make 50,000 on this property why couldn't they have just done that and made the 50 themselves and it goes to a couple different things it's you know they don't have the knowledge of you know running a full full scale remodel you know if it's a simple remodel or something like that sure you know maybe anybody can do it but that could still be complicated to somebody that's never done it before. And so a full on remodel is a whole nother animal. And that's something that they're not willing to take on. And that just creates opportunity for somebody that is knowledgeable or is at least willing to gain the knowledge to be able to do that. And then the other thing is they just don't want to do it or they just don't have the, the fresh vision or the, the new vision or, you know, their vision is one thing and your vision is another. Your vision may be wrong, you know, they could be right. And that'll that'll happen in the end if that's the way it is. You know, if they were right and it's never gonna be anything but a, a rental property and you know, you think, oh, I could put 60,000 into it and sell it for a bunch more and you put 60,000 into it and the deal can't sell and it just sits there. Well, I guess they were right, you know, but coming in with a fresh vision can be all the difference, you know, because they may not see it like that. And that's why they're not willing to put another 50,000 or 20,000 or 40,000 or whatever it's going to take to make that deal work. They just don't see it. And that's why the tired landlord isn't willing to just do it themselves because they don't want to, or they don't know how. And I hope this video helped a little bit as far as the tired landlord strategy. And I'll keep you updated on this particular project. This has just been my experience with dealing with tired landlords over time. Hope the video was helpful in some way. If not, maybe it was entertaining. Drop me a comment, let me know what you thought. And I appreciate you checking out the channel. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.